Hey everyone, it's me again, your favorite Yo! internet roommate. And with the constant growth of anime and manga's popularity, it seems every season we're getting more and more releases. But because there is so many choices, a lot of people might miss an anime or manga that's great or has a lot of potential. So I want to make a series where I shine a spotlight on anime that I feel are underrated or underappreciated even. But I'm going to try to avoid any major plot or character spoilers. And maybe if I'm lucky, I can convince some of you to either read the manga or check the anime out. And I will say not every series I'm going to talk about is going to be an amazing masterpiece hidden gem. Some of them might just be a solid six. But it's got something, you know? And there isn't a single better series to start this off with that deserves some spotlight than Air Gear. Usually when I bring up Air Gear in conversations, I get two types of responses. Either, oh yeah, the Jet Set Radio, right? Or, wait, you remember that too? I, th I thought it was just me. And that second one was usually the response I got whenever I brought it up in any of my videos. So obviously some of you might not know exactly what Air Gear is. It is a shonen ecchi sports series that started in the early 2000s and went on until about 2012. It has 37 volumes, over 300 chapters, and was created by Ugera Ito, or as he's more well known by his nickname, Oh great. The story is mainly about our boy Iki right here. He starts off being this rebellious street punk gang leader until he discovers air treks, or ATs, which are in a sense motorized roller skates, or uh, basically jet set radio stuff. And it's through his love of these ATs that he starts to find friends, his own goals, and their own goals. It eventually got an anime adaptation by Toei Animation that lasted about one season of just 25 episodes covering about 100 chapters of a manga. And then he got a few OVAs that covered random parts of the manga. So before anything else, I want to go into my history and how I came across this show and see if maybe any of you had any similar experiences. Much like a lot of the other cool nerd shit I discovered in my life, it was because of my best friend, uh, basically brother, uh, Michael, aka Bubba. And just hearing the first couple notes of the opening just gives me this huge wave of nostalgia. <laughs> Next thing you know, I'm tearing up like a little Good. and then I get time warped back to when I was like, 13. It's so vivid, like I can still smell the funk of that room because of the many sweaty energy sword death battles we had on Halo 3. Bubba constantly teabagging me and refusing to tell me the button to teabag him back. Playing Jet Set Radio and just jamming out to that amazing soundtrack. And just watching way too many machinima vids. We must have bursted a lung laughing at fucking noobs for life. And because Bubba knew, much like him, I love Jet Set Radio, he knew I would f*** with air gear. And now air gear is connected to that friendship, to playing Halo, to playing Jet Set Radio to this time period. Point is, much like how when I smell Yu-Gi-Oh cards, Air Gear makes me feel like I'm still there at that time period. It was in that blessed stage of every anime fan's weeb journey. You know, you're past that starter pack anime stage and now you moved on to stage two. The just watching anything that remotely looks like anime because you're obsessed with it stage. But enough of my bullshit, let's go ahead and break down elements of Air Gear and see if it's the type of series for you. Now one of the very first things you'll discover upon reading or watching the series is that Air Gear is kind of fucking cool, man. <laughs> first off, Old Great's artwork is fucking gorgeous. He has this way of making these heavily stylized illustrations have such a fluidity to them that it makes it feel like they're moving across the page. So when you're reading it, it's so easy to just digest and just fly through the manga. I really appreciate how he can just bounce from style to style while still making everything look effortlessly cool. He'll do these super highly detailed down to the last ass hair illustrations, some of which will have this gritty, dark, hard shading while the other can be almost zero shading and both will still leave an impact on you. But even when he goes into a more chibi style for more comedic moments, the characters still look great and it just provides so much charm to the series. Like look at this shit. 
I have never seen a chibi look so fucking cool. And something I really love is how he just loves to play with characters' facial expressions. Like, you will never know what this dude will morph a character's face into. It's a fucking Call of Duty mystery box. At times, he'll go into this super realistic looking style, usually to show a character's despair or intensity, just so that we can all get some good yuck yucks. <laughs> Other times, he'll depict his characters in this aggressive, intense style. And again, just so we could all get some good yuck yucks. Like I promise you, if you're reading this manga, you will never stop screenshotting. <laughs> Especially if we're looking at the volume covers. Oh my God, I wanna own all of them. I love the charming detail of every chapter instead of being called a chapter is instead called a trick. They're just so full of color and life and great posing and usually really unique perspective shots. And just overall really cool character design. Pretty much any character design in Air Gear looks cool. Which is another thing that adds to his style. Much like Nomura or Kubo, if Oh Great is doing the art, you can most definitely expect the drip. There is so much fit inspo all over this series. As a base, we're mostly working with a Y2K, very, you know, hip hop, street punk, street style aesthetic. You know, you got your super long chains, your masterful use of accessories. Like, yes, the headphones are not just headphones, they are a fashion accessory. <laughs> super fun and youthful cover choices and patterns and embroideries, and even references to actual streetwear brands. You got Nikon on this volume cover actually wearing Jordan 1s. You got multiple patterns that look a lot like Bape and a actual reference to Bape. It's a really cool style, easily comparable to your Jet Set radios or your The World Ends With You. In fact, the reason this video took a while to come out is because I wanted to dress like Iki, specifically this look, and I had to wait for the clothes to come in. This dude's style definitely left an impression on me, so I could not make this video without getting this fit. Just based off his illustrations, I get this feeling that Oh Great has a lot of fun just drawing his manga. It's infectious. I can say without a doubt, when it comes to artistry, you will not be disappointed by Air Gear. Now for our next positive, I want to focus on just the anime. And because it was done by Toei Animation, you can of course expect some consistent animation for the most part with some amazing moments of Sakuga. If this was One Piece. And jokes aside, I don't think that they did a terrible job at adapting Air Gear. For the most part, you are getting pretty consistent animation all throughout and there's some great Sakuga moments moments and great backgrounds too. And for the most part, the anime stays pretty consistent to the manga. Just kind of rearrange some events. At best, I'd say it's an okay to pretty good adaptation of the manga. Mainly because I don't think Toei Animation was the right studio for it. I don't think they could have captured the overall just style and visual comedy that Air Gear has. Maybe just a different studio at the helm. Maybe Bones or even Madhouse. I don't know. Y'all let me know in the comments what you think. One thing that this anime does add immensely to the series is that soundtrack. The soundtrack was created by three main parties. A musical group called Wall 5 Project, Masaki Sakamoto, and namely Skank Funk, aka Hideki Naganuma. And for those of you who don't know, that is the man, the myth, the legend behind the soundtrack to Jet Set Radio. Yes, the connection is there for a reason. And you really do feel his vibe and energy all through this project, but more specifically with two main tracks. The ending theme, Sky Too High. It's got those really cool voice samples constantly glitching in, some really cool hip hop DJ breaks all throughout, and overall just a really funky, smooth ride with a killer guitar backing the track. And oh my god, the ending visuals are amazing. It's all black and white first perspective footage of a person who's basically riding through the city on ATs. Shooting this ED in this perspective really makes you understand why these characters love ATs so much. Cause watching this makes you feel like you're riding ATs. And I love how the camera has to change angles once they go on the rails going down the stairs or the rails going up the stairs. And it's so cool that the ED ends with the stickers from the actual anime, but it's in real life now. Oh my God, I love this song and I love this ED. Overall, the OST has a very fun, youthful, energetic vibe. There's of course elements of hip hop, there's electronic dance, there's funk, there's jazz, there's rock. And when shit gets intense in this anime, oh my God, does this soundtrack help with the hype. 
when you hear that, you know things are about to get fucking funky. This track, Sky Grinder, is probably the most memorable from this OST. It's just so upbeat and hot blooded and animated. Like, I swear, hearing it, you will wish. ATs were real. And while yes, this OST mainly has an energetic and fun vibe, it still has its very emotional and heartfelt cuts too. Like, oh my god, it is a cheat code how much this anime can get me to start tearing up simply because they added in that little acoustic version of the opening theme. Oh my god. And one of my absolutely personal favorite tracks that I think are in its own world of quality is over cool. This track is one of the best at just bonking me on the head with a skyscraper sized rock of nostalgia. The opening notes alone make me feel so at peace with myself. And you think you're in for this more smooth, chill vibe, but then halfway through the track, the song just starts picking up in speed. You get this fast paced upbeat section where the synths are rising, the drums are going crazy. It gives me that vibe of being way up high while looking down on a city. And the sky is a kind of 5 a.m. full of lavender clouds kind of vibe. Just feeling free and like I've earned my wings. Definitely listen to this OST if you haven't. And the last positive I want to talk about is just the world and concept of air gear. So I think we can all admit that there was this obsession with like extreme sports in the fucking 2000s. But I think we also have to admit that everybody thinks the idea of motorized roller skates that let you glide across walls and shit is cool as fuck. Come on, let's not lie to ourselves. If you saw this show, you all wanted a pair of these. I did, you did, we all did. And I just love this idea of a bunch of dumb, super passionate teenagers that just fall in love with this fad of air treks. And you know, they start making like rules for it. They make little teams or gangs and they start making like stickers for their teams and emblems. It's just such a feel good vibe. A real like, you're a kid playing on the street with a bunch of other kids, the sun's going down, but you're just having the most fun ever. Let me know if I'm wrong about about this, but I genuinely think that the people who were drawn to this anime were drawn because of this idea of air treks. I feel like that's something that everybody thought would be cool, and that's why they started watching the anime. And now that I've given a little light to the positives of this series, I want to go ahead and talk about some things that for some people, uh, it might turn them off from the series. So first off, oh great, he, he loves titties. In fact, a lot of his earlier career was making uh, H anime, if you, if, if you know what I mean. So if you're not a fan of etchy elements in anime or manga, uh, definitely stay away from air gear because there's a lot of it. There were a few times while reading this that I, I, it was a bit distracting. Like when a character just kind of runs off and then randomly starts having a tongue battle with a popsicle for no reason. <laughs> and there's a lot of moments where it just feels like this man will use any excuse to get his characters naked. <laughs> so again, if fan service and etchy type of stuff isn't your thing, probably stay away from air gear. The other thing that might be a turnoff for some is its comedy. Now I'm not talking about all the comedy because I think most of it is very charming and there's a lot of great references all throughout it. There's moments where a whole page will just turn into a Donkey Kong reference. I was dying of laughter when Iki was referencing these lines from Dragon Ball where Goku was telling Gohan to get angry. <laughs> when a bunch of characters are looking at Iki and they see him in this very serious tone but then it cuts to Iki and he looks like this because he has to take a shit. <laughs> There's so much great visual comedy, so much great crude and toilet humor, and I just love the fact that it doesn't take itself too seriously. But definitely there are times when the comedy it's just a little weird. This motherfucker right here, I guarantee you will hate this man. For most of what I remember reading, his whole characterization is that he is a creepy drooling perv. So many moments where this dude is just being a real creep, a real weirdo, and it's all supposed to be for laughs. But nah, man, I'm not laughing. Get, get this dude off my screen. <laughs> and finally, the last thing I would say to watch out for is what to expect from this series. And what I mean by that is, don't come into the series 
thinking that it's gonna be what it looks like it's gonna be at the very beginning. And by that I mean a very low stakes kind of extreme-ish sports anime, you know, akin to your high cues. Because Air Gear has this thing that a lot of shonen anime have. It is usually referred to as shonen battle anime creep. It's basically a rapid escalation. If you watched enough shonen, you'll know what this is. It's that idea of constantly upping the stakes. The next enemy has to be stronger and, and more diabolical and, and put the world at more risk than the last enemy, basically. And Air Gear is a prime example of this. It starts off as a fairly grounded, fairly low stakes, sports etchy anime, just about some rebellious kids who love motorized roller skates. And I really like that about this series. I could really get down with this idea of making a cool little gang or team that you guys all skate together and you challenge other teams to skate matches. And the way you win is doing a cooler, faster trick than, a, than they can do. So while yes, there's motorized roller skates and gangs, but for the most part, it's grounded. A anime-fied grounded, but grounded nonetheless. But you will be seriously impressed at the insane height that Oh Great can take just motorized roller skates to. <laughs> By the end of the series, you're basically just watching a typical battle shown in anime, but with skates. <laughs> Where characters can literally shoot flames, air slices, air typhoons that can like destroy buildings. <laughs> They can stop time and gravity, the government gets involved, and, and the whole world is riding on this roller skate fight. Like, And while it does get to these insane levels, I will say, no matter what, these battles did engage me. They are still interesting to read about. But I can't lie, there is a part of me that wishes this series continued to be just a low stakes, kind of street level, you know, this kid has to use this unique new skate trick to beat this kid so that he can keep having his middle school building as his turf in the little city they live in. I know for me, my favorite parts of this series were the more grounded parts. When the way you'd win is by using a fairly normal roller skating trick, obviously a anime-fied fucking roller skating trick, but still, this is pretty, this is pretty regular. This is just like a, a jump into like a spin. It's not like he's fucking shooting lightning out of his ass. I loved when just using your ATs to help you spin up a pole real fast was considered like impressive. Or for another example, when our main character team goes in their very first battle. They hadn't registered yet, so they literally had to sit down on the concrete by the street and literally register on their laptop. <laughs> While the other team literally just has to sit there and be like, Ugh, hurry up, man, jeez. And because the series started fairly grounded like that, I was shocked when by the end I'm seeing a dude decapitate another dude. Like if I showed you Air Gear's opening and maybe it's the first couple episodes, and then I showed you this, a panel from like towards the end of the manga, you would not believe that these are from the same series. But by the end, Air Gear fully becomes a battle shonen anime where the roller skates are basically super weapons that give the characters superpowers and let them have Dragon Ball Z-esque anime battles. But if you're in for that insane ride, you will love this series. And just to give you an idea of how insane this series gets, like I'm talking Jojo levels of insane, I'm gonna give you a slight spoiler without giving you any context to that spoiler as to what happens in later part of the series. So eventually they introduce the president of the United States, and yes, it is Obama, and you will not believe what happens next. This man, president of the United States, switches bodies with a teenage girl of the main character team. Yeah, I still really enjoyed the series overall, but I can't lie, I did want air gear to stay more grounded, if you will. But I will say, no matter how fantastical and insane the stakes of this series get, it still never lost the real heart and meaning of the series. This idea of finding your own road. And plenty of shonen anime had this theme of, you know, youth or growing up or finding who you are. But I really relate to and appreciate how Air Gear handled it. That feeling that the characters get when they start using air treks, just that feeling of freedom, I relate to so hard. I didn't have a car when I was 16, so my main mode of transportation was skateboarding. Just being able to move that little bit faster, that wind in your hair and at your back, it really made you feel 
free. <laughs> I really hope I'm not sounding like an idiot. Please, if, if you skate, validate me and let me know that you, you get what I'm saying here. But I really feel that Air Gear captures that sense of freedom and being young and trying to find out who you are. These characters genuinely love air treks and what it makes them feel. It's through the shared passion of ATs that they find connections to lifelong friends. It helps them realize just how high their potential, or as the show metaphorically calls it, their sky really is. It helps them find their road, or obvious metaphor, their purpose in life. I really love that idea of passion helping you find who you are and your goals in life. You get to see almost every main character get some shine and develop. Throughout the series, each of them go on their very own roads to eventually reach their own skies. And by the end of the series, you get to see each of them discover and develop who they really are. And again, all because of a shared passion for motorized rollerblades. <laughs> Which takes you to one of my favorite panels because of the amazing quote. You will soon discover the thing you fly out for. Mm. I love that shit. It's not a perfect series, but I hope you can at least see why I think Air Gear deserves some more spotlight. And hopefully I was able to convince some of you to at least check it out. I think the best way to experience it is reading the manga while simultaneously listening to that banger ass OST. And then after you're done with the manga, watch the 25 episode anime and the OVAs. And even though I wish the second half of the series went a different way, I do still think that if we ever get a season two or a remake of the series, just stick to the manga, give the fans exactly what they read. But I also would not mind maybe a sequel series to Air Gear where it does stay more small scale, where it is just about skating and not the more like battle shonen parts of it. You know, similar concept, exact same world, maybe even the same characters, but like what if everything just stayed small scale? What if it was just a sports anime about motorized roller skates. But please, in the comments, let me know if you have any history with Air Gear, how you feel about the series overall, and let me know if there's any other series you think I should give a spotlight to that are either not talked about enough or underrated. If you like what I do, you can always leave me a like and a subscribe. I'll always appreciate it. And with all that being said, thank you so much for coming to this little pit stop on the corner of the internet. Peace. Got my wings carrying